you, Siaba and our church choir team. God bless you all. Today, I'd like to share about delays. Delays mean what you expected does not happen when you expect. Today, we live in microwave millennium. Things seem going faster than faster ever. And we live like in a mentality of faster is better. I myself is a faster one. I don't like slow doer. And I need to be patient sometimes, especially with my husband. Yeah, he's a bit slow. God make him in his way, but um, yeah, so many times I'm in a rush, but he's a bit slower than me. Even I ask a question, or have to wait for a few minutes, sometimes a few days, like that, to receive respond. But it's good to be balanced in our life, in a journey. Yeah, I learned that I'm in the midst of waiting period at the moment as I prepare this sermon. So, to receive one big blessing from God. And I prepare, God told me, come on, do this. And I prepare that God's schedule delays. Actually, in the midst of my waiting period, last Thursday, I received a phone call. Today is due time, supposed to be due, but last Thursday, I received a phone call that it's going to be delayed two days. As soon as I heard about it, I was so frustrated. Because we don't like waiting, isn't it? Um, waiting is really, really hard. It's not an easy one, and it's tough. Sometimes, in the midst of our waiting period, that gave us frustration too. Like I myself experiencing that kind of waiting plus delays, and why, Lord, I'm preparing for delays, and why you let me experience this? And God said to me, before you preach or teach, you need to have that kind of experience first. Yeah, okay. Then next time I should have voiced that kind of sermon, yeah? Anyway, we like instant noodle, instant coffee, instant hot water, or instant success. Something like everything like popping up or coming up straight away. We don't like waiting. But then, why God make us to wait sometimes? We all have experienced different kind of waiting periods. Some got short waiting periods, some experienced long waiting periods. Seems like delays so long. In those periods, we always like thinking different negative way. That's the time Saturn try to accuse you to you yourself to blame yourself because you not good enough because you not smart enough because you not study enough because you not pray enough or because of your parents because of your friends those kind of accusation will pop up into your mind or sometimes you may have so many different kind of why questions why, God, you are taking so long? Why you delay to answer my urgent prayers? All these kinds of questions will pop up in your mind. I know some of you are in the midst of waiting period too. And you may start thinking, did I do something wrong? Or... It's got angry at me? Or has God forgotten me? Don't be surprised. It's not only you experience this kind of waiting and delays experiences. But the truth is, our God is good. He's good all the time. What he does is also very good. And he is faithful. 
The reason he let us experience this kind of waiting periods or delaying things is he wants us to experience, to know his faithfulness, he, his love for us, and he wants us to know that he always does the right thing at the right time. He wants us to learn all these things, his nature. In the Bible, many great men and women, they pass the waiting test. And after experiencing their waiting test, after passing all these waiting tests, they came out with a great result. They have stronger faith. They understand in a deeper way of who their God is. And his timing is always right, never too late or never early. But all we need is faith and patience during our waiting period. This is really important why we waiting or why things seem delayed. Let's take a look at a few of their, these great people's stories. First of all, we all know Abraham. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, God promised him that you will become the father of great nations. That time, Abraham was 75 years old. And his wife, Sarai, she was 65 years old. Sarah has been barren always. But God said to them, you become the father of great nations. How long did he have to wait for to receive God's promise? Abraham and Sarah, they had to wait for 25 years. How about you and I? in the shoes of Abraham's life. We will easily will give up and we will say, God, you lied to me. This is impossible. But Abraham never had doubt in his mind. He always fight. That's why the Bible said, God said, you are righteous because of your fight. And God called him my friend. Abraham and Sarah, they had to wait for 25 years. Only after 25 years, they couldn't do anything else with their own strength. That's the time they received God's promised son, Isaac. One day we can wait. Two days, it's okay. One week, not so long. A month, still okay. But thinking about 25 years, but Abraham and Sarah, they never give up. How about Joseph? Joseph, he had to wait for 13 years to become a second chief commander of Egypt. We all know about his life. When he was about 17 years old, he was put into a pit by his own brothers. So when we think about his life from pit to prison and from prison to palace, it took him 13 years, miserable life, but in the midst of all these challenges, didn't understand situation, but he kept on trusting with patience. And finally, at the age of 30, young Joseph became the second chief commander of Egypt. Moses, for 40 years, he was tending ship before God called him to leave his own people. Imagine 40 years looking after his father's in law ship as a shepherd well trained in the desert of Midian, and he became the great leader who delivered 
his own people out of Egypt. I love about telling Caleb. When Caleb was, yeah, Caleb was one of the Israelites who came out of Egypt. When Caleb was 40 years old, he went to explore the promised land as so one of the 12 spies. As soon as he entered into the promised land, he saw the mountains of Hebron, and he couldn't wait to claim the mountains. And he said that to the Lord, Lord, give me these mountains when he was 40 years old. We all know that 40 days they explored the promised land and came back and gave report to the camp, to Israelite camp. Only two out of 12, Caleb and Joshua said, let us occupy and receive immediately. I can't wait to occupy the promised land. I can't wait to receive this good land. Because of their courageous and courage and faith, they were almost stoned on that day. But God struck the ten spies who did not have faith and down and killed them. Because of the ten and the rest of the people who don't have faith, Caleb and Joshua, they had to wonder another 38 years in the wilderness. But all the old generation die, and under 20 and all the younger new generation, with Caleb and Joshua, with their leadership, God gave them a chance to cross Jordan and to occupy the promised land. It took Joshua to occupy the promised land. It took them seven years. After divided all the promised land to all the tribes, eventually Caleb, he was that time 85 years old. He asked Joshua, give me this mountain. Back in 45 years ago, I declare and I ask my God to give me this mountain, the land of Hebron. To receive that mountain, Hebron area, Caleb had to wait for 45 years. During your waiting periods, if you think that when Satan accuses you because of your faith, because of your sin, because of your lack of faith, because you are not good enough, you could, because you did not pray enough, if Satan accuses you and if you think that way, this is not in this case. Caleb has to, had to wait for 45 years. It is not because of his lack of faith. He has full of faith. Not because of his sin, but the rest of the group. But he waited on the Lord and trust God in any circumstances. And after 45 years, Killer occupied and own Hebrew area with full of fortified and great lands and fat island. <clears throat> That's why in the beginning today at the worship service, I read Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Caleb know how to claim God's land for his own because he knows who's the owner and he enjoyed the land, the mountain. So it is worth for him and his family waiting 45 years. God bless him as he promised. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Thinking about the age of Caleb, 85 years, that's too old for us. Back in Burma, these people at the age of 80s, they are ready to die. They will say no more. 
But look at Caleb's place. 85 years, he said, I'm still strong like back in 45 years ago. That's how Caleb had a great faith and patience and he received part of the promised land and enjoying it. How about Job? We all know about Job. He was so suffer. Not only his cattle or wealth and slaves and everything taking, being taken away, but also his own family members, his own sons and daughters, they all die. Think about in that situation. Plus, his own physical body had a painful period, that kind of moment. But Job never gave up. He kept on trusting in God. He waiting on the Lord. And at the end, he got restored to Job twice as much as he had in the beginning. His cattle double up. His slaves double up. Goats, camels, everything double up. And he received all his sons and daughters. The Bible mentioned in Job at the last chapter, chapter 42, Job's daughters are the most beautiful women in the East. But God did not increase his wife, the same wife he went together. And he saw he lived another 140 years seeing three generations together with great joy and success. In the midst of trials and temptation, it seemed that God's healing hand is so delayed. But Job knew how to wait on the Lord and receive blessing twice. How about David? We all familiar young David. Since he was very young as a shepherd boy, Samuel anointed him as a king of Israel. But David did not rule on the throne straight away. He had to run away. He had to entertain King Saul, being jealous by King Saul, and so many trials and challenges he'd been through. He'd been waiting for 14 years to sit and rule Israel on the throne. Altogether, he ruled Israel 40 years. That's how David endured when he experienced delays. How about you and me? How long have we been waiting for to see breakthroughs, to receive fully recovery, to receive some achievements that we expecting? I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Things seem so delayed. But if you trust in him and have faith, fully in him, God never let. He will do the best thing for your life at his right timing. There's a man called Simeon in the New Testament, Luke chapter 2. He eagerly awaited the Messiah. He declared himself that I don't want to die unless I see, unless I see the Messiah, the promised son of God was born. He wanted to hold him and bless him. So one day, the Holy Spirit spoke to him to go to the temple. That time, Mary and Joseph, because Jesus Christ was eight days old, according to their Jewish custom, they brought him with a couple of doves and to give offering for their firstborn son. At God's right time being, Simeon was live, just living on his own in Jerusalem, but the Holy Spirit told him to go to the temple at that moment. So he went to the temple. 
And there's another lady called Anna. She always stayed there in the temple the rest of her life. These three people, Jesus Christ the Messiah, Simeon, the one that who waiting for, and Anna, all these devoted women, at the right time, God gave Simeon a chance to hold the Messiah, Jesus Christ, in his own hands. And he blessed him and blessed his family. Simeon was waiting and waiting, but he believed God's promise. In human points of view, if in this situation, you may think that it's delays. But what's God's schedule? People may, seem think, may, may think that that is the labor. In God's time, he, do, he does everything in his own time. He never lay, and he does at the right time, the right thing. We don't know how long Simeon been waiting for, but when he met Messiah, Jesus Christ, in the temple, he was really old already, and he said that, I'm happy to die. When we read Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, we do, not, we do not want you to become lazy or to give up, but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. As I share all these great people, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Caleb, Job, David, Simeon, and many great women too, Anna, Hannah, she was waiting to, to receive a baby. And God bless her, great man called Samuel. Samson's mom also waiting for a long time because she was barren. She wanted to have a baby. How about Esther? Yes, Esther been waiting and praying and fasting. But God did not delay to deliver her people. So the Bible said, in Hebrews chapter 6, do not give up. Paul encouraged us, the writer of Hebrews said, we do not want you to become lazy or to give up, but imitate those who through faith and patience. You think about these people. How did they inherit the promise of God? They all receive at the right time, whatever they're expecting. Today we need to learn these lessons while we are waiting. Things seem delays. But one thing we need to be careful, we need to stay faithfully even when things get worse during our waiting period. Sometimes we are waiting, waiting, and things go wrong, worse and worse. That's the time we need to be more careful, and we need to know who is in control. We all know that God is in control, and He is in, in charge of everything. He knows better than us. As long as you put your trust in Him, He will take care of your problems. Don't be discouraged and don't be dismayed. Just have faith. Long time ago, about a few years ago, we went to a couple place, a couple of husband and wife. We heard about that testimony. That time, they did, they did not know what their future will look like. I don't want to mention the name. They are great people. They are our church members. They faithfully committed their commitment to the Lord and to our church too. That time in their waiting periods, they're struggling to become something, you know, to live in Australia and to for their future, for their 
Korea. They studying that time. A lady, the wife said, we don't know about tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. That's the most important thing in our life. I was so encouraged when she said that. I knew the song about, I don't know about tomorrow. But as she said that, in their situation, I imagine myself in their shoes, and then I feel about it, what she means, and that day. We don't know about tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. When things getting worse in your waiting period, just believe that God is in control. That's why Peter said, First Peter chapter five, verse six and seven. First Peter chapter five, verse six and seven. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. There is due time for you and for me, for each one of us. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Almighty God can do everything. He is God of all possibilities. And he may lift you up in due time. You know, that was about back in six years ago, I think. Now, this couple doing very well. God bless them abundantly. And they're really doing well. As I see their faith, their commitment, their endurance waiting their period, God bless them beyond what they imagine and expect. Cast all anxiety on him because he cares for you. As you're waiting on the Lord, just cast all your cares, all your burden. When we look at the situation, things go wrong, getting worse and worse. You start worrying. You try to give up. You will, you will say that, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to give up. I want to go back. I want to turn back. All this negative thinking and idea will pop up in your mind. They are not from God. Make sure negative things doesn't come from God. He's our positive God. He always has positive plans for us, especially for young people who are struggling their studies. Sometimes you don't know where to start your assignment and how to finish it, what to put in the middle of your paragraph. I know I've been experiencing this kind of thing. Finish how to finish assignment, how to do presentation. You may struggle a lot. Plus, other things, your friendship with your friends, or maybe financial thing. Many things pop up together at the same time. You may want to say, I'll give up. Don't give up, knowing that God is in control. He has best plan and best interest for your future. He is good all the time. And trust in Him. Trust His promises. We need Him and we need His promises the most in our waiting periods. Waiting is the DNA of our faith. If you wait long enough, He will bless you more than what you expect. You're not wasting your time. The reason God delays is not because to let you down, to put you down, but to raise you up. There are a few people who couldn't wait for God's timing. We knew about King Saul, the very first king of the United Kingdom of Israel. He couldn't wait for seven full days. At Gilgal, the enemy is getting worse, trying to capture them, and all his people leaving. And Samuel was delaying. That time, what did he do? He did the burnt offering. Couldn't wait for seven full days. Samuel said, I'll be there. 
just wait for seven days. Bah, seven days seems too long for Saul. He did it what he shouldn't do. In those days, the king is the king. The king can't be the priest. But our Lord Jesus Christ is the king as well as the high priest too. He's the only king and the only priest together. But in Israelite history, you are not the priest when you are the king. King Saul took the priest duty that Samuel was the one supposed to do. And he did a burnt offering. For that reason, God was so angry and said, But now, what is the result? But you have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But you did not keep the command God gave you. If you listen and obey, God wouldn't take away the kingdom of Israel from your hand. But now your kingdom will not endure. That's a result of not patience, not waiting enough. This is a great lesson in our journey. I know waiting is really hard. I myself waiting. Tomorrow is supposed to be my duty to receive that blessing. But I got a call. Two days delay. It's really hard. Two days too long for me. As I prepare this sermon again, I learn about Saul. No, I should wait on the Lord. How about Abraham, the great man of faith? He couldn't wait for a while too in his waiting period. He did not fully listen and obey to his God. But he a great man of faith. But things went wrong for some reason. He listened to his own wife one day in his waiting period and to, went into Hagar, the slave girl from Egypt. And the result is they have another son called Ishmael. But that is not God's promised son. Because of that disobedience, couldn't wait for God's timing. What happened until today? These two people always had at war. That's the result. So today you and I should wait for the law, even though things getting worse and worse. Just have faith in him. Keep on trusting. In his right time, God will do the best thing for your journey, for your life. I know our generation has to wait, especially all these young people. As our youths are here with us, I saw, I look at my son. I taught him how to write handwriting beautifully. I know this is computer error. You know, computer time, you can type, you don't need to do beautiful handwriting. But back in our days, without computer or typewriter, we need to do beautiful handwriting to apply a job, yeah? To show your resume. My son did not care. I trained him very well. But lately, I don't know, because of for some reason, he copied his friends or he just like scratching everything. Can't read. Very bad. And sometimes he say, Mom, don't worry. We can type in computer any kind of font that you like. He's not patient to write down. I admire some of you guys a beautiful handwriting. I always admire about it. I love it. And you know, our generation don't want to, they, they don't, very hard. When we're talking about patience or waiting, they order shoes, they order clothes. I know about this because I work in parcel facilities. A lot of all these things every night, hundreds of thousands of parcels we have to sort. They order shoes, they order clothes, things, food, everything online. Even banking system online. Yeah, everything. So fast. Back in 20 years ago, we didn't do that kind of system. It takes so long. We don't care about if one train misses out, we can wait for another train that will come in two hours' time. Yeah. 
Now, young generation, they order, they do everything online very fast. Rather than queuing at the retail store and buying things there. And we book reservations ahead of time rather than going waiting on a full table in our favorite restaurant and things. That's how we're familiar. Everything fast, everything very systematic. But remember our God who is always the same, who was, who is, who is to come. He's always the same yesterday, today, and forever. We rush ourselves so much in this 21st century, but our God never rushed. He's the same all the time since he was beginning. The same thing. The same God. So why we rush ourselves? We can't rush our God. You need to know that. We need to remember that. I know young generation, you can't wait to get married. You can't wait to receive your graduation. You can't wait to start your new career. All of new generation or new generation don't want to wait. Plus, old generation is the same thing. But you guys live in faster world. But remember, our God never rush. But in reality, most of our lives is spent waiting period and a waiting period. Whenever I make a call to my insurance company, I have to wait for at least 10 minutes. The other day, I have like home insurance and thing. I have to wait for 10 minutes to receive their call. It's a long queue just to make a little bit changes. Sometimes we have to wait in the medical center to see our GP, waiting everywhere. Even you go to the bank, queuing a long line, you're waiting. Some of us waiting for medical diagnosis. Some of us waiting to hear from your interview. We all wait in some point, some reason. Most of our times spent in waiting period, even whether you like it or not. Things seem delays because we're rushing, but our God never rush. So today, I'm not sure what you're waiting. May, you may be waiting for miracle of healings, or you may be waiting for restoration, or you may be waiting to achieve something to receive God's great blessing. We all want breakthroughs in our lives. We all want that something changing in our life with big surprise. We don't want to wait that long. Can't wait to see, can't wait to do, can't wait to receive. But in John chapter 11, today Daniel Lee read for us, we all knew about this story. Raising Lazarus from the dead is Jesus' last miracle before the cross, and it is the greatest miracle Jesus ever did in his earthly ministry. We all knew that Jesus was delayed for some reason. A messenger was sent to Jesus. Jesus was 20 miles away from Bethany. And it say a messenger, Lord, the one you love is sick. My Mary and Martha, very close friend of Jesus Christ, they sent a message, Lord, the one you love is sick. They didn't say that Lazarus is sick, our brother is sick. But this word we need to know and we need to learn how to use, how to approach our God. Lord, the one that you love, we need you. We need a break too. We want to see your great blessing in our life. The one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. He's not going to die. He's not going to end in that situation. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. 
the sickness is to glorify our God. People did not understand. Even great faith, close friends of Jesus Christ, they did not understand in that situation. But when we look at the time, the messenger came when he was on his way to Jesus Christ to report this bad, this bad news. Lazarus already died. Because when Jesus stayed two more days after he heard that news and he went back, it's been four days in the tomb. Think about 20 miles far away from Bethany. Jesus had to walk, not to catch a train. It took him at least one day if you really fast. And when we calculated the time. So why did Jesus delay? Why he did not Heal him from distance. Like in John chapter 4, Jesus healed noblest man's son, healed from distance. He can do that. He can do very far from away to get to receive Lazarus healed. But he did not do it. Why did he get up and went with him straight away? Because the one who loved is really sick. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He did not hate them. He loved them. In verse 5, Jesus loved them dearly. Verse 6. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick. We don't understand, yeah? Verse 5. Jesus loved them dearly. Verse 6, so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Logically, we may think about this way. You love me and you will do it for me straight away. But the Bible clearly said that. In verse 1, Jesus clearly said that. Jesus loved them dearly. Verse 6, so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was there for two more days. That's why today's message topic, I gave it, God's scheduled and delayed. So we, you may want to ask, what's that mean? Was Jesus waiting for Lazarus to die? Why didn't he heal him from there? He can do it. Why he delay? Why didn't he do it straight away? You may have so many questions pop up. But Jesus said, his promise said in verse 4, this is not going to end in death, but to glorify God. That's the main theme that Lazarus suffer and die and put in the tomb for four days. If Jesus healed him straight away, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And you wouldn't have seen the greatest miracle Jesus ever did on his earthly ministry. So Jesus did the last, minis the last miracle before cross and the greatest miracle in his earthly ministry is Delay schedule. That's a waiting period. When you look at that situation, you wouldn't understand. And Jesus declared that I am the life and the resurrection. Today, you and I have different kinds of delay things. That's why faith means you're not going by sight. You have to go by faith. We need to live by faith, not by sight. But sometimes we Christians want to live by sight. When we see, we believe. When we don't see, we don't want to believe. That's not real faith. God doesn't want to honor that kind of faith. Today you and I need true genuine faith that God would want to. God wants to honor us and bless us abundantly, surprisingly, with great things. So during our waiting periods, Let's look upon our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait on him till he bless us. Till he does something, the best thing at his right timing. He will never lay. He will never early. He will do 
all things beautiful in his due time. Let's put our hope and build our hope on the rock called Jesus Christ alone. God bless you all. Thank you.